I'm in a mall right now, and I'm trying to uh, update my Instagram story. And I'm connected to the public Wi-Fi. You probably guessed it's not working, and you probably already know why. Because I'm connected to public Wi-Fi. Um, let's see. No, I know, still nothing. What should I do? Well, that's what most people do. We disconnect our Wi-Fi, and we connect to 4G, and it works 10 times better. Why is it that... 4G, cellular technology, is so much better in public places and in a lot of places, even at work or school, than your good old standard Wi-Fi. It feels like cellular technology has gone so far, where Wi-Fi is kind of still in the stone ages. Well, I got good news for you. That's about to change. Wi-Fi 6, 802.11ax. Let's talk about that. Wi-Fi 6 is the answer to most of our wireless problems. It's really amazing. I think it's one of the most important updates we've had to Wi-Fi in a very long time. Now you might be wondering, what's this Wi-Fi 6 business? I thought Wi-Fi standards came in 802.11n or 802.11ac. No, no, we, we do still have that. The real name of Wi-Fi 6 is 802.11ax. That's the new name. But the Wi-Fi Alliance is giving them a nice friendly name now, Wi-Fi 6, so we can you know make it easier for most people. And that means AC was five and N was four and so on and so on. It makes it easy. Just so long as they don't, you know, do the next standard is like Wi-Fi 6S or jump right to Wi-Fi 10, <laughs> that would be dumb. So let's not do that Wi-Fi alliance. So how will Wi-Fi 6 solve our high density congested areas when we're in schools, malls, airports? How will it solve those problems? Well, before I jump into that, and it's, it's a whole slew of amazing things it does, before I jump into it, Let's analyze how Wi-Fi works now and why we have a problem, because it's it's crazy, guys. Seriously. So let's check it out real quick. Okay, buckle your seatbelt. I'm about to show you how wireless works right now. Your current Wi-Fi in your enterprise and everywhere you use Wi-Fi, this is how it works. And again, it's crazy. So here we go. Let's say we got a small network, like uh, one access point, one AP. You might have this in your house, you know, in, in a small office. Now let's put three devices on this network. Now most networks have a lot more, so I'm keeping it very simple. So let's say we have a cell phone, maybe a smart light bulb. And that, that's actually a smart light bulb right now. Alexa, change office lights to blue. Okay. Smart. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> and then maybe a, a laptop or a computer. Okay. These are all connected to our wireless access point here, and that's how they get their internet pretty typical scenario. And right now, all these devices are waiting on some sort of data from the access point. So the phone uh, guy, he just refreshed his Twitter feed, so he's waiting on some, some tweets to hit his feed. Uh, the light bulb is waiting on his color to be changed, so he might be waiting on a, uh, just, hey, change my color. And the laptop might be watching YouTube videos, so he might be waiting on some video streaming packets. And I'll just draw an arrow, I guess. That's his video stream. Now you might think that, oh, well, the access point will just send the data to all of them all at once. That makes sense, right? But that's not how it works. <laughs> and it, uh, it's, watch this. Oh my gosh. The access point can only talk to one device at a time. So it's more like this. Hey, uh, phone, here's your Twitter feed refresh. Okay, we're done here? Okay, cool. All right, light bulb, here's your uh, color change. We're done here? Okay. Computer, here's your YouTube video. All right, we done here? Okay, we're good. Again, this is one at a time. This is how it currently works from 802.11ac and before, everything before. This is how our wireless works. Now it gets even worse. So not only is he only able to talk to one device at a time, he's having to wait his turn. You see, while he's trying to talk to these devices, these devices are also trying to talk to him. And it's kind of like a four-way stop, you know? You, you come to a stop sign, but you also got three other cars that are coming. You have to wait for the all clear. You can't all go at once, you'll collide. And that's exactly what's happening in the airways right here. It's just a big, messy, oh, oh gosh, oh gosh. So the AP is waiting for an all clear, and then he's clear to send his traffic. Now I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, well, Chuck, my wireless works fantastic in my house. I'm watching this video right now on YouTube. It looks great, it looks crisp. I don't have any problems. And hey, I, I agree with you. My wireless actually works great right now too. Uh, but the reason it works great right now, even though this inefficiency is here, is because we've made it fast. Which each With each generation of Wi-Fi we've introduced, we've made it go faster. We've made it just a little bit better. So with the earlier standards, it might have been like, okay, here's your data. Okay, here's your data. Okay, here's your data. But with later standards, it might be bam, 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 bam. We made it faster. 
but we still have that same inefficiency where the access point can only talk to one device at a time. Now here's what just makes me angry, to think this is how it works. <laughs> uh, our access point will communicate with all our devices in the network over what's called a channel, or you can think of it as like a highway. And the bigger our channel, the more bandwidth can go across, and theoretically the faster our network can be. Sound like a highway, the more, the bigger your highway is, the more cars that can go across. Okay, we understand that concept. So when we upgrade our wireless standards, going from N to AC, we've been making our, our channels bigger, allowing more bandwidth to go across, but we still have that same original and efficiency. So for this example, let's say this channel was 20 megahertz wide, and it's a gorgeous channel, it's a gorgeous road. Let me just polish it up a bit here. And really, it's more than enough bandwidth to handle all the traffic for all three of my devices here. But how does it work? Well, when my phone needs to update its Twitter feed, and my light bulb needs to get some information, and my, my laptop needs to watch a video, well, the AP still has to give the entire channel, the whole highway, to one device at a time. So Twitter feed, even though the Twitter feed only requires just a little bit of bandwidth, he still gets the entire channel, the entire highway. Same thing for the light bulb. That's a very, very, very small amount of traffic, like just a little bitty, tiny bit of bandwidth, but he gets the entire channel every single time he needs something. Boom, boom. And while he's given that channel, no one else can use it, which, again, is kind of inefficient. I want you to focus on that, inefficient. Now, again, you probably think your Wi-Fi is fine on a small network, because it is. Uh, companies like Cisco design their access points to be super wicked fast with the AC standards, so these, this highway is going boom, 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 super fast, but it's still really inefficient. So what does Wi-Fi 6 do with this? Why is this new version so, so spectacular? Well, let's get into it. So the AC in previous standards had something called OFDM, or now here we go, this is a big one, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, which basically took our, our highway, our, our big channel, 20 megahertz, 40, 60, and we added lanes to our highway. Boop, 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 boop. So we kind of put our channel into what's called, or cut up our channel into what's called subchannels. And the purpose behind that is just like any other highway you think. We put a lane in there so we can avoid interference with the other <laughs> cars going across the channel. Stay in your own lane. That's basically what this is for. That's OFDM. Okay, cool. We divided up our channel into subchannels. Awesome. But you still have to give all of those subchannels, all those lanes, <laughs> to each device one at a time. We still have that same inefficiency. Ah! <laughs> so even though my phone refreshing his Twitter feed only needs like half a lane of traffic, he gets the whole highway just for him, just for himself. <laughs> That's smart. Not really. No, it's stupid. Now, again, I want to hit this point home. You're not going to have a lot of issues with just three devices in your network because boom, boom, boom. It's really fast. But when you're on a public Wi-Fi, you're at a conference, and you're sharing that one access point, that one channel with maybe... 20, 30, 40 devices, well then, that's a lot of devices talking to one device at a time, which is why you feel the pain, you start to feel the hurt, the congestion, the, the all the contention, it's it's ridiculous. It's like 40 people all trying to talk to one guy at a time, and he's trying to talk to all of them, it's, it ain't gonna work, it's just gonna be a, a bunch of noise. That crowd drone you normally hear, just the, the, the white noise of people talking, it's horrible. It's this inefficiency that Wi-Fi 6 is solving, and it's... That's why it's so huge, because we're not just increasing speed. We're not just making it talk to one device faster. We're changing the whole game. What if I told you that up until now, the way we've been using Wi-Fi has been more like a network hub, if you're familiar with networking concepts. Uh, but with this new Wi-Fi 6 and this new feature I'm about to talk about, it's like we've gone from a hub to a switch. It's huge. It's crazy. So with Wi-Fi 6, we take that OFDM, the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing, and we add one more letter to it to make it amazing. We add an A, so now it's orthogonal frequency division multiple access. Let me add that A there. Now what's so special about this? Well, the headline, I'll go ahead and ruin it for you, <laughs> is that the AP can now talk to multiple, several devices at once, whereas before you could only talk to one device at once. Okay, big improvement, but it takes it even further, and this just makes me drool. I love it. Check it out. With OFDM, we divided our channel into subchannels, lanes on a highway. With OFDMA, we're still doing that, but we can divide it even further so we can make the lanes smaller. Now, wh wh what's the point of doing that? Why make the lanes smaller? Why ch have a little more bite-sized chunks? Because we can do this. Watch this. Let's get back to my example where my phone needs some Twitter stuff and my light bulb needs a color and my laptop needs to stream a video. Well, the access point can communicate with our devices figure out how much bandwidth they need, how much of that channel they actually need, 
and reserve pieces. These are also referred to as resource units or RUs. So for a Twitter feed, we might just need a little bit of space right here. And that's how much we're reserving in that channel for the Twitter feed. And then maybe the uh, the light bulb only needs just a little chunk right here too. Just a little And then the laptop, he's streaming video. So he might be streaming a huge 4K video. So we'll, we'll give him some more stuff. We'll give him maybe three whole sub-channels. And that was actually two. I, mean, I, I can count, don't worry. <laughs> so once the AP has figured out how much of the channel to give each device based on their bandwidth needs, he can then send it all at once in one transmit opportunity. Now that is stinking efficient compared to how it was before where he's talking to one, one device at a time and he's giving them the entire highway, the entire 20 megahertz channel, however big the channel is. Now he can divide up the channel based on their bandwidth needs and send it all at once. That is huge. But wait, there's more. <laughs> of course there's more. Now, up until now, you're about to find out, the AP has had no control over the uplink traffic. He can't control when someone sends him data, so he's always fighting for the airtime. There's always a bunch of contention going on in the airwaves. But now with OFDMA, he can control when devices can send data to him and how much bandwidth they're allowed to send, how much of the channel they're allowed to use. He now has kind of ultimate control over the downlink and uplink. Insane. So no longer is the access point in a big battle with all the devices on his network. No, he's in control now. He can say, everyone be quiet. Okay, phone, you can send data. I'm sending stuff to you. We have this much of the channel allocated, 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 and it's, it's beautiful. Versus what we had before, this is groundbreaking. Can you imagine what it's gonna do for the services and devices that require like a really great quality of experience or quality of service? Like let's say for example, my, my phone was uh, about to place a VoIP call, right? And it's over Wi-Fi. Well, the AP can work with my phone, give him a little sliver of the channel, just enough for a VoIP call, which isn't big. And he's reserved this red carpet treatment on the downlink and the uplink. I've heard a lot of people compare this to like a virtual circuit or a virtual tunnel, your own little special HOV lane or whatever you want to call it on the highway on the channel, guaranteeing your traffic. We've never had this much control over the traffic on the wireless network. Now the reason all this stuff, OFDMA, which is by the way, is just one new feature of Wi-Fi 6. Why all this is awesome is because it's addressing our needs of the future. So a, a big part of what we're doing now with wireless is we're putting a lot of IoT devices in our networks little small devices that don't use a lot of bandwidth, but they're still connected to our wireless. And we're deploying a ton of them. Like you might have a factory with thousands of little devices that communicate with your access point and giving it metrics, little metric updates. Like, hey, I need to be fixed, or hey, I'm okay. And with the old way of doing wireless, think about this, let me, let me draw it out. We just have a ton of little IoT devices on the network. And even though each of these don't need much bandwidth at all, they don't need anything. Just a little, little, little bit of room on the highway. Even though they only need a little bit, the old way is gonna give each one of these little guys the entire highway. That's so inefficient, and you can see why that would be a huge problem. Like, that, that network would be bad. <laughs> but with OFDMA, we can give each of these little guys a sliver of the highway. We can fill this highway with little tricycles or whatever. And then we can send the data all at once to all of these guys. So it's huge for IoT, it's huge for conferences where you have a ton of people connecting to one AP, like Cisco Live. Anybody going to Cisco Live? Um, I'm hoping that in the next few years, we'll see some AX, some Wi-Fi 6, that will help us out with the congestion. Airports, schools, hospitals. You've got these medical devices that are like really intense, like they have to be up, they have to be running because they're communicating some very sensitive data, heart rate monitors and such, you know, life or death situations. They've got to have great Wi-Fi connections. But again, like hospitals, they have a lot of people connecting from patients to all the instruments. We need a different solution. We needed a more efficient solution. Solutions that can deal with these, these high density situations. And that's what Wi-Fi 6 does with OFDMA. That's why this solution is so killer. That's why I'm excited about this. If it were just faster, I wouldn't be so excited. We've been getting faster and faster Wi-Fi with every new standard. And yeah, AX is faster. The, uh, I think 802.11 AC was around 866 megabits per second of maximum throughput when you're talking like one device, like like one AP to one phone using one antenna. And with AX, it goes up to like, the, I think uh, 1200 megabits per second. So it, it is faster, but that's just an afterthought. When you, when you look at OFDMA, it's so much better, insanely better. 
Now we could probably stop at OFDMA and be happy with the new Wi-Fi 6. Like that's more than enough, but it has a ton of new features. And I'm only gonna go through two more of them that I think are just super noteworthy. So real quick, here it is. So looking back at IoT, I mean, Wi-Fi 6 is all about supporting um, IoT and a bunch of devices. A big feature it's implementing is something called TWT or target wake up time. And it's centered around this. Let's say um, this is a smart candle, it's not. But let's say I put a Wi-Fi radio in this and I have it set to like, it'll alert me <laughs> when it's um, out of wax or it might just tell me what the wax level is. And I don't need to hear that information constantly, like not like 20 times a day, maybe once a day at the end of the day. And that's how a lot of IoT devices work. They communicate one time with one bit of data once in a blue moon. Okay, cool. Why is that a big deal? Well, because their Wi-Fi radios have to be up, running, and active all the time. They have to be up and ready to send that data so they can stay associated with that access point, with this guy right here. Now that's inefficient because you're having your Wi-Fi radio up and running, probably full blast, and you're wasting battery life. What target wake up time does is the AP and the device can work together and figure out a schedule on when he needs to be woken up. So again, my candle only needs to communicate with me once a day. So he might say, AP, I'm gonna sleep for 23 hours a day. I'm gonna turn off my radio, but can you wake me up every day at 7 p.m. so I can send you some data about my wax levels? And they say, okay. So he's able to power down his radio and save some battery life. Now, the battery life for one IoT device probably isn't a lot, nothing to write home about. But when you're talking factories and hospitals and schools full of these IoT devices with Wi-Fi radios, if you can power those down, that can add up to a huge power savings. And it's not just IoT actually, it's for our phones as well. Um, manufacturers of phones can now use this technology, this target wake up time to save battery life on your cell phones. That's huge because I'm, even though this is a newer phone, the iPhone 10, my battery life is starting to wane and I sure would like it to last longer. So now they can, they can boast about even longer battery life without even improving on their battery technology. They can just talk with the AP and make the device go to sleep. And even more with IoT. I know, we've been talking a lot about IoT. What's the future? Even more. Guess what's back? Guess what's making a comeback that went away in the last standard, but it's here now. The 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. It's back! He's back again. All right. Why is that cool? Well, AC, the last standard we just released, uh, it's been a while. Uh, it only supported five gigahertz channels, which is great. It gives us a lot of bandwidth and a lot of improvements. However, 2.4 disappeared. No 2.4. If you wanted to support 2.4 gigahertz in your environment, you had to rely on 802.11n. But now with AX, 2.4 is back. And why that's important is for, again, IoT. A lot of IoT manufacturers, when they, you know, set up these IoT devices, when they build them, they wanna keep it pretty cheap. And that involves maybe putting in a lower end Wi-Fi radio that only supports 2.4 gigahertz. Well, AX will fully support that, and that's awesome. It also gives you longer range. 2.4 is longer range Wi-Fi. So your IoT devices can be dispersed further away. This is actually the first advancement to the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum since 802.11n. So it's been a good while, like 10 years. So this is cool. <laughs> Wait, hold on, do, do you guys hear that? There's like some guy talking. I live in an apartment and there's people sometimes that are in the next apartment over and I can kind of hear their muffled sounds. I don't know what they're saying and they're not talking to me, but how annoying would it be if every time I heard that while I'm recording this video, I just stopped and listened. And then when they're done, I started talking again. That would be a horrible video. Who would do that? You would just tell me to ignore them. That's how Wi-Fi kind of works right now. <laughs> Did you know that? Our access points will do that. <laughs> they will, if they hear any kind of other channel, other wi wireless SSIDs, you know, networks out there talking, even if they're far away, if they can just hear the muffled noise, they'll stop and listen thinking it might be for them. This is called CCI or common channel interference. And it's dumb because it interferes with our wireless performance. But with Wi-Fi 6, it introduces a thing called BSS coloring which basically means you assign your <laughs> Wi-Fi network a color, you color your network. So let's say my network right now is Team Blue, and my neighbor over here next to me is Team Red. Well, when Team Red is over there talking, my network will ignore it because it's not Team Blue. You only listen to Team Blue. We only care about Team Blue. That feature will help out with that common channel interference, and it's huge because wireless communication is all about avoiding that contention, avoiding overlaps, so that you have that clear communication. 
Now it's funny, I kind of listed off those last few features like they're just afterthoughts because OFDMA is that cool. What it does for us, how it changes the game. Exciting, new, it's, it's cool. AX is gonna be a game changer for us. But when is it actually gonna start being adopted? When is it gonna hit the market? Well, the standard is almost finalized by the IEEE, which doesn't mean much. I mean, people, there are APs out there already that support AX. And at Mobile World Congress, we had a few devices announced that will now support AX. Uh, the new Samsung phones, uh, I think LG, they will have AX support. So we're, we're seeing some devices come to market with it. But with that being said, when should you start buying 802.11 AX or Wi-Fi 6 access points? Should you buy them as soon as they come out? As soon as they hit the market this year? You know, I would say yes, even if you don't have a lot of AX endpoints on your network. Why would I say that? Because that's the only benefit, right? Well, no, actually not. Not only is AX the most backwards compatible standard out there, so it'll support all your devices no matter what, but even if you only have a small number of devices that support AX on your network, it will instantly improve your wireless, just like that. Because with technologies like OFDMA, it will instantly make your AX devices much more efficient on your network, which means that your, all your other devices, your ACs and your, your ends, aren't competing or contending with the AXs for channel usage. Your air is a bit more clean and clear. So it's kind of like the more AX devices you add to your environment, the cleaner your air is. They're like little air purifiers for your Wi-Fi, wireless purifiers. I'm gonna trademark that. Now, what if you wanna upgrade right now? Like, what if you're rocking some 802.11n APs and you need to upgrade your network? Should you wait for Wi-Fi 6 or AX APs? Which actually should come out pretty soon. It might be a moot point by the time you watch this video. Uh, but should you wait or should you upgrade now to AC APs? I think if you're rocking some old equipment, uh, you should upgrade now. <laughs> because you want your network fast and reliable right now. And going from N to AC, it did do a lot of things. A lot of improvements. But that won't be the answer for everyone. Because your environment might be pretty unique. If you have a lot of IoT devices, if you have um, huge bandwidth requirements that rely on Wi-Fi, it might be a different thing for you. You might want to wait for some AX, which again, is coming out really, really soon. Now, what about 5G? 5G is getting pretty popular. Um, it's a big technical buzzword. How is this going to affect AX? Well, you know, they're both pretty similar. They both offer higher performance. Oh, coffee. They both offer higher performance. They both offer, uh, you know, larger capacity. In theory, one day we should be able to just be connected to 5G and hand off and connect to our Wi-Fi seamlessly. It's gonna be awesome. Now, another big application for Wi-Fi 6 is VR. It's gonna be huge because more and more things are becoming reliant on VR. Uh, everything from collaboration to video gaming. <laughs> uh, we're seeing more of that and it requires more bandwidth, more capacity. And that's why Wi-Fi 6 is helping us move into the future with this cool stuff. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, check this out. I'm at the office right now. I'm, I'm teleworking. Oh, my hands in my face. Making coffee. Maybe one day none of us will be in the office. We'll all just be commuting like this. And we'll need some killer Wi-Fi. If you want to know more about Wi-Fi 6 and see what AP Cisco is coming out with, check out the links below. You know Cisco is going to have some killer access points coming out that support AX. Well, guys, that's about it. I've got some work to do. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later. I'm going to brew some more coffee, actually.